share a few words with you so that on this beautiful day as we finish the season of the Kiratizmis, the beautiful prayers dedicated to our mother, the mother of God. I want to bring our attention to two phrases. There are many, many phrases, beautiful phrases, but to two of them. One, that the mother of God is called a ladder from here to heaven. And the second one is that she is the container of manna. We know what manna is. That's what the Israelites ate in the desert. And we know what the ladder of divine ascent is because we celebrated St. John Climacus last week. A ladder of divine ascent because you cannot go to heaven if there is no means, there's no way. In the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we see a ladder coming from heaven and the angels going up and down. It's very important to notice that the angels were not coming down and going up. They were going up and down as if the heaven was on earth. The angels were not in heaven anymore, but they were on earth because God himself, the incarnate Logos, was on earth. And that divine ladder on which we climb every day of our life is the mother of God. She is the bridge between us and her son that connects us to God. She also is the container of manna. The manna was given to the Israelites, the chosen nation in the desert, so that they remember that God takes care of them, that they need to live a carefree life. That they cannot be entangled in the cares of the world and forget God. That they cannot be self-absorbed and self-reliant that they need to put their needs in front of God and know for sure that God will take care of it. As God fed them in the emptiness, darkness and the cold of the desert, that He will feed them. And manna is the witness for that. The container of manna was in the temple. And now our mother, the Theotokos, is the container of the true manna. The manna was a symbol of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The heavenly bread that came down from heaven to feed us, to feed the Israelites in a desert. But the Lord gave His body to us so that we are fed and we are enriched through His body. And He taught His disciples to pray like this, give us this day our daily bread. That the container of manna was given to us, the Theotokos, who brings us the heavenly bread so that we remain in communion. Like the Israelites every day ate the manna in the desert, that we also eat the daily bread every day. Not the bread that we buy from the stores, but the bread that was given to us through the Theotokos, which is the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have fallen into a place of receiving communion once a year, twice a year, once every great holiday. We forget that the commandment is in the Lord's Prayer every day. Several times we say, give us this day our daily bread. And we starve ourselves from our daily bread until the greatest feasts come. We barely make to the church. And the cares of the world consume us. I was at Tufts University. I spoke with the students today about 
care freeness carelessness and falling into despair St. John Chrysostom in his homily on repentance which is very appropriate for this season teaches us that we can fall into two grievous sins carelessness or we can go into despair so I would like to bring our attention to those three words as I brought their attention of the students carelessness that we think that everything is ritual we automatically will go to heaven and we do not put effort into our daily spiritual growth of strengthening ourselves through the manna that is given to us as a daily bread and we do not care to climb the steps that the mother of God herself is for us to go to heaven and struggle through that the second which is falling into despair comes when we are not careless anymore so you may think if you overcome carelessness it's good then you can go but then when you start climbing those steps the evil one is not asleep the evil continuously trips you attacks you in every level of your life and tries to bring you to the edge of despair and the fathers warn us mostly from despair that good Christians usually struggle with despair because we try and we try and we try again and we're still on the first step of the divine letter sometimes we find ourselves in the mud we need to pick ourselves up like Don Quixote from our own hair stand ourselves up and go back on the letter so carefree means that we are in communion with our Lord and that we cannot be taken by the cares of the world we cannot be careless about our spiritual growth and when we start to grow spiritually we cannot give up because we are not successful that we fail that we fall a few weeks ago we watched the movie about Saint Nectarius he was attacked the entire his life that's one of the sins of Christians we persecute Saints and then we put their statues when they die he was persecuted the entire his life by his own brothers by Christians he was refused to be given even a teacher's status in Athens just because he was not a Greek citizen when he died all of a sudden they paid attention to the miracles because that was beneficial to them one thing that caught my attention anything they did, did to him personally he did not respond he simply took the attacks upon himself but when at last they attacked his spiritual children he was enraged and everybody was surprised why father why are you so angry he said well if they attack you that's fine you can turn the other chick but when they hurt your children you need to protect them and I will stand up for them as I watched the movie I didn't understand quite the meaning of this reality as I was listening to St. John Chrysostom's homily on repentance he talks about St. Paul who says to one of the churches I gave birth to you and you have fallen and I gave birth to you again he says St. John Chrysostom says giving birth is the hardest thing and mothers can witness to that that it's the most painful thing on this planet imagine he says 
St. Paul gave birth once. Then he had to give birth again to the same children. Chrysostom says, imagine you give birth to a small child and then that child is grown and you have to give birth again to the adult child that you have. That's what makes mothers fearless because through pain, the love is undefeatable in their hearts. That's why Saint Nectarius said, I will turn my other cheek if they hurt me, but when they hurt my children, I cannot because he had given birth to them. He had gone through the pain of labor, of giving birth of children. Like Saint Paul. So dear brothers and sisters, that's the most difficult thing in life when Christians hurt each other. That's what brings despair into our hearts. Everything else in the world that happens, we may not have bread, we may run out of gas, we may not be able to pay our mortgage. That is recoverable. But when one Christian fails or one Christian is hurt by another as if we lose our own children. And that brings us to the edge of despair. And sometimes we say, well, let's give up. But, like St. John Chrysostom says, that's the struggle of the Christian. Never despair. Because, like St. Paul says, hope never gives up, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen.